All right, guys, it is April 14th, 2021. Today marks 14 days. I have left to finish my 55 for Girl Starboard's Car Show in Tulsa. Probably not gonna make it, but I'm gonna keep going. Anyway, today is basically a wet sanding day, trying to get a lot of the parts wet sanded and ready to paint, uh, which I wanted to paint Friday, but now there's a 70% chance of rain, so I doubt I paint. But anyway, you can see from the mess in the floor, uh, I've been wet sanding pretty much all day. I've got a lot of other little small parts sanded and ready as well. But I thought I would take the time uh, to run you through a lot of the parts here that I have done a ton of custom stuff to that you're probably never going to know was done unless I tell you. So if you got about 15 minutes, I'll run you through all this crap. So anyway, here we go. I'll start with the, the grill. This is a reproduction chrome grill. And uh, I ended up, I think this is the one I actually had to drill and tap. I was thinking it was the firewall because I used these Ring Brothers uh, hood adjustment bumpers are just a little bit more trick looking of a piece but if i remember right the, these are the ones that are small and ring brothers doesn't make them that small so i had to drill and tap that bigger but anyway so i have all four ring brothers uh, hood bumpers in there now i i attached the grill to the grill tie bar with 12 point arp 1032s with stainless steel nylon lock nuts on the back which i'll have to take this back apart to paint this but i also speed hold the tie bar here and I chamfered the holes, but it's just to give it a little detail. But I also speed hold the uh, bracket back here as well. And it's a funny story because I couldn't find that bracket. And I looked all over and I got mad and got in my attic. And I speed hold another one and did all the body work and painted it. And then when I dug the grill out, it was still attached to it. So <laughs> I forgot this was still attached to it. So now I got an extra uh, speed hold one. But Anyway, this go around, I went with a chrome uh, latch plate here because every time I paint one of these, this is supposed to be CAD plated, but every time I paint one, the hood latch always chunks it on this one side. It chunks the paint off real bad. So my idea was to get a chrome one and the chrome would be harder than paint, which it already, it's already got a little spot started in there, but it still probably wouldn't be as bad as paint. What I wanna do is take quarter inch vinyl tape, masking tape, and do a quarter inch edge around this and then I'm going to blast it with my blaster and then uh, etch prime it and then I'm going to paint it the, the satin black that I'm painting the tie bar. Then I pull the tape and it'll have a nice little chrome edge around it but it'll have chrome where I need it for the latch to keep from you know looking so bad if it was painted. That way it kind of matches because this chrome latch plate is kind of out of place if this is black like this needs to be chrome you know what I mean? But Anyway, I've got it attached with 12-point ARPs as well, and I have nylon washers in here, which is what I like to use during mock-up stage on new chrome parts and stuff, because you have to move stuff around to adjust. That way it doesn't scuff it up, but those won't go in when I bolt it together for good, but those are under there just for mock-up. So that's the grill. Now, on to the doors. There is a bunch of little stuff going on in these doors that you're never going to notice. Um... I ended up body working the entire back, the whole jam area right here across the bottom and all around the front of both doors, and I went back and blocked all the body filler out. That way these are super laser straight and slick all the way around for when the doors are open at the shows. It just shows well. Um, I did exhaust pipe and sheet metal, and I built a cap and hole sawed this and then pretty much welded it all in there and ground it, and it's for a reflector. So just be a little bit of detail in the door. I've never seen that done. I've always seen guys put reflectors in their door panels. I've never seen anybody put them in here, but I just thought it was a nice detail to put in there. But anyway, the other thing I done was the uh, rear. This is the window track for the rear that bolts in. It'll bolt in here and it'll bolt in here. And I welded a 12-point uh, ARP bolts will go in this, so I welded in square nuts, 1032 square nuts. So I'll have some nice... Uh, detailed hardware to put in here and uh, in, in case you want to put some custom hardware in your latches and in your strikers as well this is the kit you will need this is from totally stainless and that's the part number right there this is specifically for tri-5 chevy because your striker bolts are specific they have a really small head on them uh, regular hardware store countersink stainless steel allen but uh, bolts will not work the heads too big. You'll have to grind the heads down a little bit. But if you buy them from Totally Stainless, they fit perfectly. But anyway, so I'll have nice hardware in the, in the latches and strikers as well. 
So I ended up doing a two-part seam sealer all the way around the door uh, skin, and I did it on the deck lid as well. And that way, you know, it'll keep all the moisture and the dirt from getting in the edges and all that stuff. And the paint will continue to look good over time. I tried to put seam sealer up inside as well. I put a piece of clear hose on the end of my seam sealer when I was doing it. But when you get to the front, there's like a box up there for the hood or the door hinges. So I couldn't really get to it. So at least I got a little bit of it done. But anyway, so lots of work uh, just in the door there uh, to do that. But anyway, they should show very well at the show. I uh, also got the wing window assemblies. They're, they're restored and done. Uh, I even blasted the frames and painted them flat black. These uh, stainless steel strips, there's one on each side. I slid those off of the frames. These got the dents worked out of them, sanded and buffed, put back on. I've got the new rubber seals on with the new glass and the new chrome window frames and the new uh, little latches there. So that'll be nice uh, put on on the doors when they're painted. But one of the biggest things done to this is uh, all the metalwork and bodywork that went into this car. So these cars suffer from what a lot of guys call marshmallows on a stick. Uh, if you had three marshmallows on a stick, that's what the side of these cars look like. If you get at the back or the front and look down it, the quarter panels have a crown to the door, then the door has a crown, then the fender has a crown. So you have three humps. So to do that, I did a lot of metal shrinking. I actually split the quarter panels at the jam up there, pulled the quarters out a little bit, and then I hammered the door edge uh, here out a little bit. And when I did that, it actually put a crease in the outside skin. Uh, it kind of sunk it in. So I had to weld a whole bunch of studs on there with my stud gun pulled all that out. But what that it did is it ended up making the quarter follow into the door correctly. Now the front fender to the door at the front didn't take near as much uh, metal shrinking to do that. So this was the hardest part. But at that point, when I bolted the car together, after all the metal work was done to body work it, I wiped the entire sides of the car from the front to the back, all with body filler, and then went back and blocked it. That is the only way to get a true laser straight car, and that's why all the high-end shops do it. You get a, a perfect flat panel that way. But the problem with doing that, wiping the front to the back and then blocking it, you'll end up with thin and thick jam edges here, like your, your edge of your door edge here. It'll be thin and thick from all the you know areas of filler. So I did all of this in metal, hammer and dolly, during the bodywork stage, so my uh, edge all the way around the doors is the same thickness on both doors. So lots and lots of metal and bodywork went into them doors to get them uh, that slick. So we'll move on to the fenders. From the factory, these are two piece. This fender extension is supposed to bolt on because obviously they can't stamp the entire fender with this on there in one whack. So that's why these were separate. But anyway, I cut the flanges off and I butt welded these on. And I even did welding and metalwork on the back side, so you can't even tell anything was ever done. Uh, that way, if a judge happens to look up in there or put a mirror up into there, uh, it just looks like it came that way. But anyway, this flange here, the inside. Uh, fender edge here. I wiped all of that and then went back and blocked it out because these are very very rough from the factory ripply and wrinkly uh, So that'll look nice and slick uh, and here's something that some guys may not ever think of now you can Grind your rivets off of these brackets that go on here. These are riveted on from the factory So when you try to paint these on the car, there's a space in between there You always end up with dry spray So if you remove that panel you can paint them separately and then bolt them back together with some nice little stainless steel button head allens uh, I think I used 1024s with a stainless steel nylon lock nut on the back so you can actually bolt those on and it'll just look cleaner. Now I also speed holed those, drilled speed holes and I stepped them and then I chamfered them a little bit so they kind of look like a miniature dimple die. I'm going to go back with some silver paint on a brush and go in there and do the inlays in that and then wipe it off with a reducer on a rag so it'll look nice and slick. But anyway, I speed hold both sides, so just a nice little detail there. Also remove this bracket, there's two rivets, and I'll do it the same way with the same bolts, the 1024 uh, button head allens. And I drilled three speed holes in that bracket as well, it goes to the inner fender. I welded a square nut here, this is for your uh, lower splash panel that bolts in there, it takes some ugly coarse factory style screws. I did a square nut, now we have a 12 point ARP that'll bolt it on. And I did uh, all thread here, I did studs instead of bolts because these always break off. 
So I do a stud and that way when you go to bolt it back on the car, like at the front of your rocker, uh, there's a hole there. And if you have a stud on there, when you go to hang your fender on, that stud goes in that hole and it keeps you from getting the back of your fender into your door and chipping your paint during, you know, you're bolting it on part of it. So it's just what I do. But it seems like every time I unbolt a 55 fender off a car, that bolt freaking breaks off. So, you know, it just holds moisture and dirt and crap back there in that back side of that brace. So I just always weld a stud in there. But anyway, I got my headlight bucket assemblies out here. These are already been blasted and painted and restored. These are done, both of them ready to go back in, but there's some custom stuff I done here. Now I went with H4 Max Tail headlights uh, because these are almost pretty much a flat lens instead of having like a domed sealed beam. And uh, the other thing about them is they're fluted and they remind me of an old KZ1000 motorcycle headlight or any old KZ. They have the fluted headlight lens and I always love those headlights and those bikes. but. I've had three KZs in my past, but anyway, so I like these headlights and they're not that expensive. They're like 50 or 60 bucks for a pair. So you might look into buying some of those. The H4s are as a removable bulb in the back. So you can change the bulbs out, but these came with bulbs. But anyway, they're just a little bit brighter than your normal sealed beam halogen that you would put in there. But anyway, if you put in just a regular old sealed beam headlight, you know, they have the domed lens on them. And then normally you bolt these buckets into the front, they drop in the front like this. So when you put your chrome headlight bezel on there, you, you look like your car looks like it's bug eyed, like an insect with bug eyes sticking out. So, you know, about this much of your headlight ring shows outside your bezel. So what I did was I took the clips that normally slide onto the fender up here so you can bolt that bucket in and I cut those, cut the backs off and I welded those to the bucket. Now the buckets go in from the back and they screw in. Now if you do that, your bucket has two brackets on it to bolt your headlight bezel to. There will be a bracket at the top and a bracket at the bottom. You'll have to grind those rivets off and then when you get done painting your fender, you will have to bolt those brackets on or rivet them to the fender. So, but anyway, by the time you put your headlight in and your bezel on, your headlight face and your bezel is almost even so it looks like a french headlight but it still looks stock so moving on to the splash apron i've welded square nuts in here so i can do 12 point arps i did the whole front clip is all square square nuts welded in to get rid of those ugly factory core style bolts um, there's a bracket that goes under here uh, from the factory and it's riveted on as well there's two rivets one there and one there you can use the 1024 uh, countersink, or I mean, uh, button head Allen's in there as well. Now this bracket, I drilled speed holes in it too, and uh, I've wiped it with filler and blocked it out as well, so it is very slick. The beauty of that is this doesn't get painted with this at the same time. This is a separate piece. So I can put my Raptor liner on there, and then this is separate, so it's a breakup of black under there. So that's pretty cool. Thanks, man. Just set it right there. Appreciate you. So anyway, my deck lid here, I think I showed this the other day. There's a lot of work done here on this. Uh, I still have to wet sand this down and reshoot it because of the uh, trash in the paint. So uh, I'm gonna be wet sanding this to reshoot it, but there is some custom stuff done to the bottom side of the deck lid that you don't see unless the deck lid's open. But anyway, that was the UPS guy. And what that is, is my new Holly HP series billet fuel pressure regulator and all my AN fittings. So how cool is that? I got those Fregola, I think is how you say that, uh, black anodized fittings uh, for all my fuel system. Anyway, on the deck lid, there's all kinds of holes in this thing from the factory, and I welded sheet metal in there and smoothed it all out, and uh, so it should look pretty nice. Now, I'm still putting the trunk light back in here, and I wanted to be able to fish the wire through the trunk lid to come up inside to go to that light, so I did not weld these up, and... It's just easier so I have another opening to reach that wire to try to help get it in through there instead of trying to feed wire in here and try to snake it all up in there just from like reaching up in through there. So I built some covers that go in here and will bolt on. This is a piece of strap and I've drilled it and tapped it to take some 12 point 1032 ARPs as well. But 
the other thing about not welding this all up and smoothing it is it has a bead rolled in it so i had to do some kind of little custom thing in there it was just basically easier for me to do that but i still have access to get a wire through there if i need to now here's another thing that i did besides using the two-part seam sealer around here to seal this up and smooth it out um, i put uh, angle iron up here i cut pieces out rounded the corners and bolted them on that is more surface area for your trunk bumpers because if you have ever rebuilt a 55 painted it and then you put your trunk bumpers in your uh, tail pan there the round trunk bumpers and then you go to slam your trunk lid because you have a brand new rubber seal on there and that thing is not yet taking a seat to the car you got to slam the hell out of the trunk to get it to shut and what happens is you chip your paint on your tail pan and on your deck lid because the only surface area that your trunk bumper hits is the thinness which is like eighth inch of your deck lid right there so i did that to cover more surface area so i won't chip my paint and i got that idea because in like late 55 or 56 for sure in 57 they had something like that from the factory that screwed on there so that's where i got the idea i just welded mine on there but anyway guys uh, i'm gonna go in and have dinner thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please do that uh, probably have another video tomorrow, so I'm going to get back to work after dinner. Thanks for watching.